Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell, doing a weekend wrap up here on a beautiful Monday with Jason Cameron. Uh, so we just saw the end of the Stanley Cup final game seven. Uh, Florida was up three games to none. Edmonton made a huge comeback and uh, forced the game seven. Uh, but their comeback falls short tonight. They lose 2-1 to one in Game 7. Florida Panthers' first Stanley Cup in their organization's history. Uh, a lot of people had counted them out after blowing a 3 nothing to three games nothing lead, and uh, they pulled it off tonight with a uh, really hard-fought 2-1 to one win. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? First off, I'll say this. I, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but I predicted the last four games went the way that they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I like after the 8-1 game, I was like, I think Edmonton might have found something. Yeah. But here's the problem. They won three straight. Right. You know how hard it is to beat the same team four times? Yeah. Exceptionally hard. That's why the last time it happened was 1942. So yeah, I, I that's why I figured I'm sorry, but I think the Panthers win in this one. Wow, you know, and that's that. Then that's exactly what happened. That's what they did. They did. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't see how many shots on net both teams had. Were they was it fairly close? It was uh 24 21 uh, in the end. Um, Edmonton had 24 shots. Florida had 21. Okay. Um, so that meant Pervosky actually played really, really, really well. Yeah. Because uh he, he's he'd been giving up a lot of goals lately. Like he, a ton. Had, he had, yeah. <laughs> he, he had been not looking like goalie bob and uh all of a sudden, yeah, yeah um played great tonight. Um uh, Florida played a really good style though. They kept a lot of the action to the outside. Um they blocked a ton of shots. I don't know what the numbers are on block shots, but they Seem to be in every lane, every shooting lane, every chance. They uh, Edmonton uh, was trying to set it up, and uh, they were blocking those shots and sending them wide. And um, yeah, just the uh, that will to win, that desire to finally do it after falling short last year in the final, and the heartbreak that they felt. Uh, they they really uh, came out hard. They got the uh, early goal tonight, and it was like, uh oh, uh, here we go, and. Most teams, when they score that first goal in the playoffs, uh, when I think their record was fifteen and two, when they had scored the first uh, goal of the uh, of the playoffs, um, they uh, they were uh, eighteen and zero in the past two years when they had a lead going into the third period. So uh, you know they were deadly once they were ahead, and uh, very very difficult. Um, Edmonton scored their goal only two minutes and 17 seconds after Florida had got the uh, first goal of the night. So uh, that big roar and, you know, the fan momentum really just dissipated pretty quickly after. And it was Florida, when Florida scored their first goal, it had been 184 minutes and 27 seconds since they had a lead in the series uh, playing time. So it had been a really long time. Uh, their lead only lasted two minutes and 17 seconds. So then it was like, okay, back to a brand new game. Uh, when they scored that second goal, um, it just seemed like, oh, this could be it. That could be the winning goal. It was scored by Sam yeah. Reinhardt, who's a yeah. Vancouver boy. He was born here in the lower mainland. His dad played uh, for the Canucks his last two years of the of his career and uh, decided to stay here in the lower mainland uh, ended up raising three hockey playing boys. And um, Sam had a phenomenal year this year. He scored 57 goals in the regular season, another 10 in the playoffs and gets the Stanley cup game winning goal. Uh, pretty great. We're going to see the cup uh, here in North van. I know the Oilers aren't bringing it home, but uh, it's good to see, He'll get his day with the cup and he'll um, bring it locally here. That's awesome. That, that's fantastic. That's great news that we'll get to see the cup. Unfortunately, not in the hands of our Canucks team. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. with that being said, at least, um, you know, somebody, a uh, BC boy did good. 
did well, got the winning goal, and is able to hoist the cup. I think on the 23-man roster, there was 16 Canadians playing for the Oilers, and I think four played for Florida. Uh, So we will get to see the cup come here to Canada on at least four occasions. I think it's four, uh, the final total uh, on the guys. Um, Some of the guys get their name on the cup also if they played at least half the games in the regular season and if they played at least one if a if a guy played at least one game in the playoffs he gets his name on the cup um and then special circumstances as well uh we just we just checked into that and um if a guy gets a serious injury and he's out um they can ask for a special exemption and uh, it has been granted for guys to also get their name on the cup and have that um as a uh, you know a big uh, career accomplishment so uh, we'll see in the final total um, it would have been great for uh, you know all the 16 Canadians that were on the you know the full roster of the Oilers also a couple of other Canadians um, that were playing with the Oilers through the season didn't end up making the playoffs um, you know playing wise uh, injured and all that kind of stuff but um, the one thing that really bothers me is that um there's not that many sports that canada's better than the u.s in because they have 10 times more people usually they can dominate us in sporting events around the world hockey is one of them where i think canada still is supreme and and uh has been able to show so on the world stage but a lot of people that aren't true hockey fans don't realize that at least two-thirds of the nhl still has Canadian-born players, Canadian-born and raised players. And so a lot of Americans that don't follow the sport that closely think, oh, we're still way better than Canada. We always win the Cup. They haven't won the Cup in 31 years, so we're obviously uh, better talented hockey players in the States than Canada is. And and that's something that bothers me, that really, you know, eats at my core. And I was hoping that finally this 31-year-old drought would end. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Yeah, American teams win. Yeah. But if you look at their roster. I know. I yeah, know. But, it, but, but the people that Canadian. don't follow the sport yeah. heavily, yeah, I know. they I know. don't realize that. <laughs> they, they, they don't think. know that. And they still think, oh, yeah, Canada sucks. Can't win the cup. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're no good. And and there's a lot of sports, you know, when, when um, somebody, you know, wins the Larry OB, it's the world champion you know, LA Lakers world champion. And, and it's like, no, that's not true. Cause it's yeah, only true. happening in one country in the country, NBA, yeah. excluding one Canadian team. Uh, you know, they're, they're always doing that world, world series champion, best team in yeah. baseball. No, actually <laughs> best team in America. You know, yeah. Uh, but uh, unfortunately the, the ignorance of, most Americans that don't follow that sport, you know, day in, day out, and know all the ins and outs of that, just think, yay, America, we, we're the greatest and everybody else sucks. <laughs> and it's and it's annoying. It's, it's very annoying. It, it is annoying. Yeah. It is annoying. And I remember, there, I, thought, I think it was an Olympian that pointed that out, where it's just like, no, you guys aren't world champions. I remember he got killed the media over that. He's like, yeah, I'm not taking that back because I understand what world – and champion means. Like I looked it up in a dictionary, and that's yeah. it's different than what you Americans think it is. So yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, you know we've got a lot of American viewers, a lot of you know American friends and family, and you know mm-hmm. I, I I love this the U.S., but uh, you know that's one thing that keeps bothering me. And it would have been nice to just have that in the rear view mirror, and nobody talks about this long thirty-one year drought again and again and again, and. Um, you know, I wasn't like, ju- I'm not, I wouldn't have been jumping around crazy. Yay, yeah. the Oilers won the cup. Yay. Cause I never really been an Oilers fan, but uh, just nice to have that narrative just over with would have been great. It would have been great. But here is another narrative that can actually happen. Here, here's another potential narrative, which is the fact that the Panthers were able to repeat and this time win the finals. Yeah. Edmonton has the same chance to do that. Can do that next year, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. And so that would be a great narrative in and of itself where they come so close. They battle so hard just to fall a goal short. Yeah. So they come back next year harder than ever. Yeah. McDavid is hungry. Great. He's starving. <laughs> he wants that cup. Great. And so that would be a great story. That would be a great storyline. All Edmonton has to do is like, you know, do it. It's going to yeah. be really hard because yeah. I want to say this. I don't know if you'll agree with me on this, but it seems that the West, a lot harder to come out of to yeah. reach the finals and out of the East. It is, is that, right what now, do you think? Yeah. In this day and age, it is right now. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the West is, is tougher. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it'll be a hard slog. Uh, they, they played a yes. hundred games uh, of hockey this year to get to this point. So, um, yeah, very, very tough to repeat and get back there. Good on Florida for doing it and uh, yeah. making that wrong that they felt happened to them last year. Um, now there's going to be an MVP crowned. I don't, uh, think it's actually official quite yet, but, um, I think it's going to go to Connor McDavid and, uh, that'll be quite controversial, but, um, he was the best player by far in these, uh, in these playoffs and for it's, um, it, it seems like it's kind of uh, inevitable that he's going to get it. Um, what do you think when a losing a player on a losing team gets the MVP? All right. First off, this has happened before. This has yeah. definitely happened before in the NHL finals. So my thing is this. Is he deserving of, of the award? <laughs> kind of hard to argue that he isn't. Yeah. Really tough argument to to debate that he is not deserving of said award. So for me, I don't have a problem with it yeah. because he was just so clearly the best. He like he was clearly, clearly the best. head and yeah. shoulders above everybody else. Oh, yeah. He's the only like he was the reason he was the engine. It went to seven games in the first place. Yeah. Him. Sure. He did all that. So yeah. yeah. I I think he ran out of steam a little bit. He ran out of gas. Uh, he had those back-to-back four-point nights in game uh, four and five. And then game six, he was shut out, didn't get a shot on net. And also tonight, shut out, zero points. And um, I think he uh, he threw the team on his back in those games <laughs> where they clawed out of it and were able to um, get you know this series tied. And then I think he he ran out of gas as well as I think they just said everybody at him. Two or three guys just cover him. Yeah. Don't yeah. let him get the, you know into open ice. Uh just stick to him like glue and make other beat people beat us. And and uh I guess it worked out to be a, a good plan on Florida's part. Well, yeah, because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. We'll let everybody else beat us except that one dude. Yeah, because we know how dangerous that one dude is, especially once he gets rolling downhill. Yeah. So we're just going to pay uber attention to him. Good luck, everybody else. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. 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 The last time uh, a player on the <laughs> losing team uh, won the MVP in the Stanley Cup final was Jean Sebastian Giguere for Anaheim back in 2003 when the Devils beat the uh, Ducks. Um, it happened in uh, with Ron Hextall in '87, Reggie Leach in '76, Glenn Hall in '68, and Roger Crozier in 1966. Uh, the only other non-goalie was Reggie Leach in '76 with the Flyers um, to uh, capture the Stanley Cup, uh, Con Smythe MVP trophy, and. Um, McDavid has uh, every trophy in the book uh, numerous times, uh, but this will feel a little bit, I'm sure, empty when he skates up and grabs this trophy tonight where uh, they were this close to uh, capturing the cup. It'll suck because it's just like, it's like, oh, so I got my second prize here. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, like it will feel pretty empty. It's still one hell of an accomplishment, by the yeah. way, but it will – it won't feel like that once he accepts the cup because he he came so close and it's every professional athlete's dream to win it. Yeah, not win the Conn Smythe. No, 
Um, PK Subban should get his name uh, put on the Stanley Cup tonight. Uh, that guy has been so busy lately. Uh, he was on first take this morning. He was on Pardon the Interruption this afternoon. He was on uh, Pat McAfee show. He was on every ESPN uh, possible broadcast that they had uh, using him as an expert. Uh, it was the weirdest first take I've ever seen, seeing uh, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, and P.K. Subban start the broadcast talking about hockey. Uh, they were like, uh, we don't know anything about hockey. So about hockey. We got uh, P.K. in here to uh, give us his expertise. Even Molly said, I don't know nothing about hockey. I've watched more hockey than I have in my life the last few days here. But, um, yeah, it was a weird start to first take, I'll tell you. Kind of cool though. It's a cool yeah. moment for NHL for yeah. that what for this couple of days where it's like you were front and center, right? And I do need to say this about PK Subban. Dude's a stud. He's been absolutely killing it. Yeah. Been absolutely killing it. I've heard some of his analysis and stuff on television and stuff. And I'm just like, the guy's like, he's a natural. Yeah. Like I think I you you tell me what you think. I think he's as good as Kevin Bietza. He's yeah, no, he's fantastic. Uh, he's he's really great. They are lucky to have him on the ESPN broadcast and ABC and and yep. uh, yeah, I I'm not a big fan of Mark Messier, but uh, PK just absolutely kills it. Uh, it's amazing how good he is, and and he really has become um, you know the the go to guy to utilize and and uh, you know probably America's number one analyst for hockey now. Yeah, because and the other thing is too, you, you can hear his passion coming through. Yeah. Like remember, like I remember the one where he's talking about McDavid, and he's just like, Come, get on board, everybody. Yeah. This guy's unfreaking believable. He's yeah. he's our Michael Jordan. And you see enough Connor McDavid highlights, you're just like, Yeah, yeah, he he kind of is. Yeah. Because nobody because the one thing that was always unique with Michael Jordan when he was on the basketball court, he moved different than everybody else. Yeah. That's Connor McDavid. I know that's the that's another thing that's kind of a kick in the you know nads there. Just uh, Connor, you know, winning this tonight probably considered the greatest comeback in you know uh, finals history, maybe even any sports finals history. Uh, definitely the NHL, and uh, you know, getting that ring finally, uh, getting that validation that he is the best. Um, he's going to have a hard time surpassing Gretzky and Lemieux, but you know, you you started seeing his name creeping up on those boards with Gretzky yep. and Lemieux and all those records. He was able to beat Gretzky's assist record in this one. Uh, just being able to culminate with that Stanley Cup, I think it it automatically cemented him in the Hall of Fame if he wins that tonight, and uh, you know, puts him in that conversation for the greatest ever. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. Because if he if he pulled off the impossible, because even getting to this point was supposed to be impossible. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. Right. So but if he had, was able to actually finish it off, like, well, Edmonton wouldn't sleep for a week. Like it'd just be it'd be over. It'd be yeah. a wrap. Nobody would go to work. Nobody. Hockey is uh, <laughs> hockey is a great sport. Love it. Uh, it frustrates me, though. <laughs> and it, I think, would um showcase the top level guys and separate them from everybody else more often if they uh, adopted the nba style of timeout so you can get seven timeouts in an nba game and your guys can theoretically play about 48 minutes 45 to 48 minutes guys can play that because they get so many timeouts they get time to rest and they get time to get back out there and play in hockey we're seeing our top players like Connor mcdavid I bet you he played about 25 minutes tonight, maybe 30 at the very most, probably not even close to 30, but 25 minutes out of a 60 minute game. If you got a lot more timeouts, if you get some chance, you're going to get to see him out there more and you're going to get to see probably the cream rise to the cut to the top. And these guys winning the cup more often because he is head and shoulders above everybody else. And uh, we saw Michael Jordan win six, NBA championships. We saw Kobe Bryant win five. We saw, um, you know, a lot of these guys winning four, five, six titles, and it's because they were out there all the time. And I've 
I froze for a bit there. <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, we you're were, good. <laughs> we were out there all the time. And they were out there all the time, and they were winning these titles. If if Connor McDavid, uh, McDavid's playing 40, 50 minutes a night, he's probably winning more cups and being able to, you know, have a legacy of winning four or five, six Stanley Cups instead of maybe one or two like Crosby only has and Lemieux only has and Gretzky only won four, uh, you know, compared to the top guys in the NBA. I think the NHL has missed out on that by having four lines and, you know, rolling them on and you're not getting to see the stars play as much. So what you're basically saying is that they should incorporate more TV timeouts or just have more timeouts available time for out. the team yeah. so that yeah. their top stars can get a blow. That yeah. is not a bad idea. Yeah. Because what are you spending your hard-earned cash on? You spending it to see, Big man, bad. I can't wait to see that hard grinding fourth liner. I love that dude. <laughs> yeah. Nothing but like a lunch pail. You know, he's got the worker's hat on. <laughs> love it. Love yeah, it. Yeah. No, man, I'm there to see Conor McDavid do spectacular stuff. Yeah. So. If you're watching an NBA playoff game and you see the 10th guy, you know it's a blowout. And yeah. <laughs> one way or the other, you're either winning or you're losing. You're not yeah. seeing the 10th guy unless it's a blowout. You're you're sometimes not even seeing the ninth guy. You know, here yeah. in hockey, you're seeing fourth liners, third liners go out there. And they're not scoring. They're never scoring. So you gotta wait. As your your team's out there, you gotta wait. Oh, another shift without McDavid. Another shift without McDavid. Oh, another shift without McDavid. Oh, good. I finally get to see him. He's out there for forty five seconds. Then he's gone again. And you might not see yep. him again because they get they take a penalty. They uh, you know, they're they're it's it's just brutal sometimes when you're trying to watch your team and you're look, waiting forward to the, seeing the guy back out on the ice and you're waiting three, four, five minutes at a time until he's back out there again. And, you know, he definitely double shifted a bit tonight, but, but it was not enough. He should have been out there 40 to 50 minutes and he probably could have brought them the cup tonight. If he was out there uh, enough, but the problem is, would he even had the stamina to do it? Like, does he have enough of an engine to get it done? Right? Like, that's that's the question. If because you get hockey's... used to, if you get used to, you get can you get used to anything? If you if you you're playing that much in the crucial games, you get used to it. You 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 can do it. You can do it. He yeah, he would have like... done it. Like that guy, I bet you'd say, hey, let's go play right now. I'll I'll give you sixty more minutes. Give me you know, get me out there. I'll play more. And he probably. You know, look look at the games that go into overtime. Sometimes they play yeah. one, two, three more periods. They're still playing. You know, that that's true. That's true. But um, you know, but you know how coaches are, man. Where they do the line matchups and everything else. It's as soon as McDavid's out there, it's like, well, go get him, right? Like they yeah. got their best defensive players on him all sure. the time, right? Yeah. So it, it would be tough, but I I think you might be onto something because seeing top players more on the ice is beneficial for everybody. One timeout is just ridiculous. Sometimes a team doesn't even utilize their timeout through the entire game. So that coach doesn't even get to, you know, draw up a play, get, bring everybody together and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get this goal. He de he doesn't get to do it. His, his real role is just sending out the lines and bringing, yeah. you know, getting the lines back and forth. But the rest of the game, he's not really involved. Look at the NBA coaches. How many opportunities do they get to draw up a play and get a bucket when they need it to stop a run, to get going on on something, to reset to everybody, give them a little rest? Like the NBA coach has so much more involvement, and you're paying coaches a lot of money, and you're trying to you know drive this team, and you're trying to see the stars, and uh, you know it's not happening as enough enough in hockey, in my opinion. Anyway. I'll get off my soapbox there. Um, how soon do you think we're going to see uh, Edmonton pizza all over the country now that Jim Terliving has... No, he's not going to change yeah. it now, is yeah, he? He's not going to change uh, it now. Boston pizza. Ed it was almost Edmonton pizza across Canada. Jim Terliving, the owner of Boston Pizza, said he was going to change the name if they won the cup tonight. 
Yeah, I know. I when I saw that, I was just like, "That's a lot of money." <laughs> oh, good for you though, man. Like I, I, I thought it would be pretty cool. And then what he should have also mentioned is, by the way, if they win, all Oilers people organizationally can eat at my Boston Pizza or Edmonton Pizza for free forever. Yeah, that's the other caveat he should have added. Yeah. But it's fine. It's fine. I I just assumed it anyway. So, but <laughs> hey, man, it, uh, it was a fun. It was it was a fun ride, man. It was a yeah. fun ride for Edmonton. The fact that they were able to battle to even get to this point. The fact that I think Connor McDavid solidified the fact. You know, I am really good playoff performer. Like yeah. I'm, I'm really actually really good. So, and I think now you've given Oilers fans hope because you made it to the Cup final. Yeah. That means you can do it again. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing that's also going to bother me is we're going to have to hear about the 1942 Leafs uh, still for another year at least and and probably <laughs> another 10 more because there might not be a, a 3-0 comeback in you know many, many years. Uh, we always hear about the 1967 Leafs, the last time Toronto won the Cup. We have to hear about yep. that 1942 Leafs, the time when they... <laughs> Came back three nothing down and one four straight. We also hear about the have to hear about the 1945 Leafs because they were uh, up three nothing. Detroit uh, ended up tying them three games to none, and then Toronto won the game seven and won the cup again. So uh, stinking Leafs, man, don't want to hear much more about them. Um, it was Bob Cole's birthday tonight, so they did a little tribute with him, which was really great. The Greatest play-by-play hockey guy in the history of the game. Also, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, tonight was the anniversary of the first time O Canada was ever sung. Oh. Um, that's pretty wild. That's uh, pretty Atlantis cool. Morissette was the uh, anthem singer tonight. And they said, um, yeah, they, they created the O Canada song. Somebody sung it today hundred and whatever years ago and uh kind of wild that it fell on tonight i thought that was a bit of an omen and i thought uh it might spark <laughs> edmonton to win the cup but no such luck yeah omen that that's yeah. that's actually pretty good yeah that didn't work out so well for us but you know what still a very cool thing that like because i i that, i did i had no idea about that tidbit of information i didn't know that was a thing so that's very cool Pretty very cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, we're into the off season. Uh oh, one other thing for Vancouver uh, Canuck fans, Roberto Luongo finally gets to have a Stanley Cup. Uh he is the um he is their special advisor. Uh and uh, he's worked for the Florida organization for the last few years. Uh he will get his name on the Stanley Cup and um gets to hoist it as well. Uh, he pounded the drum tonight, got the fans into it, and um, some some local uh, Vancouver people uh, I've heard say that they were hoping that Luongo would finally get to race the Stanley Cup. Yeah, sure, I guess you know what, like you you didn't you earned it, but you didn't really earn it. Like, yeah. Not as a player, sorry, Roberto. <laughs> right. Like it, it you yeah. you get your name on there, but I think it means more when you do it as a player. Not as a whatever, a special advisor, whatever he does for the team, where he collects a paycheck and probably doesn't do much. But yes, <laughs> congratulations, Roberto. You did it. You finally got your name on there. Way to go, man. I, uh, I saw this huge crowd of uh, Oilers fans down in uh, Florida before the game all uh, gathered around. And the reporter was uh, passing the mic around a little bit, asking them where they're from, what they were doing. And one guy had a replica Stanley Cup and he uh leans into the camera shot and they say uh hey how you feeling and he goes oh damn great we uh i threw this baby on with me 100 of my friends got on a charter flight down from edmonton we drank the plane completely dry and we are <laughs> here to party and uh, it was like okay these are some good other fans that you know chartered a plane and uh grabbed the replica cup that came down and drank a try. I thought uh, this is going to be fun to see them around tonight. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, they'll be uh, drowning their sorrows a little bit uh, drinking from this cup. Yeah, yeah, they're going to drown their sorrows. But you know what? I love the fact that they did that that spontaneously. Yeah. All hundred of these men said, "By the way, 
Not going to be around this week. No. Talk take, to you later. Take, take some time <laughs> off of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they came from the oil patch probably and just oh, yeah. headed straight there. Yeah, yeah. spent a lot of money. Uh, instead of heading down south somewhere, some somewhere farther south, they, okay, yeah. we're, we're all heading out. We're getting the, this flight and uh, get on them. Uh, there are there's a lot of oil money in uh, in Edmonton, so um, yeah, get on them to do it. Um, big big week in the NHL uh, because this pushed so late. It hasn't been this late in a in quite a few years, I think. Um, the NHL uh, awards are just happening on Thursday, and the draft is Friday and Saturday, and it's uh, all at the Sphere in uh, Vegas there. So it's oh. going to be really fun to watch and see the kind of cool things they do with the sphere with the, uh, with both the awards and the drop. Yeah. Cause I am actually kind of excited to see what that looks like because yeah. uh, there hasn't been many major uh, sports that have been in the sphere as of yet. No. So I know the NHL is going in there and then I think in a couple months, UFC is going in there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see like how they utilize the sphere and its uniqueness to make the draft like something memorable, which I'm sure they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, locally, Vancouver fans, uh, we still have nine um, free agents, uh, unrestricted free agents. Um, yeah, we got the one signing so far, but uh, no other signings to report. Uh, free agency hits uh, July 1st. So uh, I expect at least lose uh, probably half those guys. We'll see if they can come to the bargaining table and uh, work out some of the contracts. But um, this team uh, that everybody watched uh, reached the second round of the playoffs, take Edmonton all the way to game seven in that second round. Uh, I think we're going to see quite a bit, quite a different team uh, going forward. Kind of sucks, actually, to be think if you think about it, because they 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 finally found close to what it's supposed to look like. I know what like the final product of this what this team is right. potential to be and the fact that they're going to lose like a lot of these guys kind of sucks it's really sucks really sucks yeah. yeah too bad but uh yeah hopefully we get some good news for you in the coming weeks and uh they are able to reach an agreement and get a, a few of these guys uh, under contract uh, Zadorov and Joshua I think should be the uh, number uh, 1 and 2 um targets and try to get those under contract and then see where the chips fall after that but uh i am wearing a vancouver bandit shirt uh i uh -huh. went to the game on saturday and uh they had a phenomenal win a huge 104 67 victory over Ooh. ottawa uh beat them by 37 it was a complete spanking uh they played awesome uh unbelievable um, they got their 10 three-pointers again, and that gave me uh, free chicken tenders, which I'm pretty pretty damn happy about. Uh, did you get the free chicken tender uh, as you were walking out the other night when you were there? Yeah, so I guess they forgot to give it to me. Oh. And then I and I also, too, I wasn't really paying attention. I, oh. we, I, was, I was literally talking with my buddy and his son and just more asking his son, how did you like the game? Asking his friend, and it was like, "Oh my god, the game was amazing!" Like so, we were kind of over the moon with that, and must have missed out on the chicken. Oh tenders. damn! Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll grab you one next time, and uh, I'll, I'll drop it by and give you. It was, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's fantastic to um, get some free swag. Um, they have a contest there where. Uh, they pull a random fan out of the audience and he gets to shoot uh, from a spot. It's about maybe um, maybe about three, four feet from uh, the half line on the side. And uh, okay. um, it's kind of the, in the corner when you would cross half court. <clears throat> it's just in the yeah. corner. There's a spot there. And it says okay. the flare spot. And uh, so you get a shot from there. If you sink it, you get a free trip wherever Flair Airlines flies. So okay. uh, the guy came up, looked like a ball player to me. He uh, took a shot and missed missed it uh, at the hoop. Okay. They said, okay, 
sorry that you missed, but uh, we're giving you another shot at the other hoop. So you, you spin around and then the guy says, okay, your foot has to be at least touching any part of that circle when you launch this shot. So he said, hey, can I take a little run at it? And the guy's like, yeah, as long as when you launch that shot, uh, your foot is in that circle, go ahead. So he took a few steps back, took a run at it, took a shot, banked it in. He won nice. three trips for a year anywhere Flair Airlines flies. And they fly all over the world. I, I looked it up and uh, the guy could fly pretty much anywhere in the world. And he could have like 365 flights if he wanted to fly every day. Like it was a pretty sweet prize. It was pretty fun. The place went bananas. That's actually pretty awesome. That yeah. that's that's a great great package that they were giving out for people that could make that shot. Yeah. Because obviously they think, well, it can't be that many people, right? <laughs> no. Can't be even one, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some flare guy got fired over it. Maybe <laughs> yeah, lost my job today. <laughs> <laughs> the flare executive, like, oh, I, I, I didn't think anybody would get it. Damn, I'm really did. sorry. Yeah, it's just like you know how much that's gonna cost us, right? <laughs> Great job, great job. <laughs> they could have got insurance for it. I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe <laughs> they didn't. But um, anyway, it's a good promotion. Uh, we good had cool. a blast as always. Um, absolutely phenomenal game. Um, they played earlier in the week against Edmonton, and they had a huge collapse. They lost. <laughs> um, they lost in that uh, target score uh, by <laughs> one, and uh, I think they. Uh, we're outscored 22 to six down the stretch Ooh. and uh, oh, it was rough. It was really too bad, but they got back on track. Uh, they are six and all oh, uh, um, have won every game at home. And uh, their next game is coming up against Edmonton this coming Saturday. So if uh, anybody's listening and watching wants to go, um, yeah, uh, don't put it off. It's a short season. It's like 20 something games, a very short season. So, you do not want to miss it. Uh, we had an absolute blast and and uh, really happy we went again. Um, Tajay Moore was pretty shut down in this game. They were taking the ball out of his hands. He only got four points, but he had 13 assists, which is tied for the most assists in any game by any player this year. So um, good on him that uh, he was a facilitator after they you know double teamed him and got the ball out of his hands. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic because he's still finding a way to affect the game, which is what a great player is supposed to do. If you're going to yeah. take this away, then I'm going to do this instead. Yeah, he had four points, 13 assists, and eight rebounds. Uh, a good game all around. Uh, Kobe McEwen was their top scorer. He had 28 points, six rebounds, five assists. Nick Ward, the Warden, 18. Zach Copeland, 15. And, um, yeah, they had uh, – uh, yeah, it, it was it was a nice turnout, uh, great crowd, and a lot of fun. Uh, as I said, uh, Edmonton comes in Saturday, another home game. That's their next game. Uh, Edmonton sits second in the Western Conference at seven and three. Vancouver's now eight and two. Uh, the last time they played was just June fourth, and the Bandits beat them ninety three ninety. So a really tight game. Should be fun next Saturday. Oh no, it's going to be a lot of fun. Great fun. I'm just impressed with how good the team is. Yeah. The team is absolutely fantastic. Very well constructed. I love it. Yeah. I'm also wearing orange uh, in tribute for our BC Lions, uh, who won 26-24 over Winnipeg over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> another big victory there in the con in the um, conference. And uh, uh, amazing performance by Vernon Adams. Uh, 21 for 33, 398 yards passing with a couple touchdowns, 24 more on the ground. And his top receiver was Alex Hollins. He hauled in seven balls for 215 yards and a couple touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, had an absolutely amazing game. And our Canadian Justin McKinnis was great as always. Uh, six catches for 95 yards. And we have a, a running back. His last name is Starback. How cool of a nickname is that for a running back? William Starback had 16 carries for 83 yards. And, um, yeah, Lions 2-1 and one on the season. Second place in the Western Conference behind Saskatchewan, who is 3-0. and oh, And that puts Winnipeg down to 0-3 on the year. 
and Winnipeg has been at the top of the league for the past five, six years. I don't think they've started 0-3 since 2012. So um, pretty amazing that uh, we've been able to uh, knock them down and, um, yeah, keep on second place. Uh, we play Edmonton coming up this Thursday here in BC Place, and Edmonton is also 0-3 on the season. Well, can't we just pencil that in already? Like, that's a, just a win right now. Like, 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 like that, yeah. Edmonton, you are horrible. <laughs> horrible. So, yeah. win. Already, yeah. win. Yeah, yeah. Just don't even bother getting on the plane. Just let's <laughs> talk up another win. Yeah. 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 They're, Edmonton, they're uh, their game on the weekend, uh, they were going to win, and they, <laughs> uh, they, they got a roughing the kicker penalty. Um, on a missed field goal and the guy ended up getting get 15 yards got to go 15 yards closer and kicked it i think that's how it ended um they they yeah. had it wrapped up and finally were getting a win and uh the guy blew it the the coach looked really 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 choked and uh i i think that guy might be walking the unemployment line uh this week after blowing it like that so you're trying to tell me they found a way to lose yeah Crazy. Yeah. The Edmonton Elks? No way. Yeah. <laughs> like, even the name is horrible. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. There's <laughs> a reason why they keep losing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay. I, I We need to talk really quickly about the soccer. Um, CONCACAF is taking place uh, all across the U.S. Uh, Canada had a really good showing uh, against Argentina. Did lose 2 nothing, but uh, really looked good. Uh, their second game, they play Peru tomorrow. It's a 6 o'clock Pacific kickoff time. Um, Peru is a very, very tough team. Uh, they got into a huge battle last game, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. But uh, Canada needs to finish, needs to score some goals. They haven't got any goals under their new coach. Uh, three games, zero goals. Uh, need to get uh, a few goals in and try to get their first win in this CONCACAF. And hopefully they can do that. But uh, like you just said, they need to generate offense of some sort, somehow, some way. And I think this is supposed to be one of our stronger teams we've ever had. Yeah. So, yeah. like, we're we're yeah. supposed to be impressive. Yeah. So start impressing us. Let's do it. Start yeah. doing something out there on the pitch. Yeah. Fingers crossed we can do it. Yeah. Um, the Euro Cup continues and uh, amazing games today, uh, especially the Croatia-Italy game. Uh, it turned out incredible. Uh, second half, uh, Croatia's, um, Croatia's uh, trying to uh, get a, a shot across the middle, and uh, one of the defenders on Italy uh, was trying to block it. He turned his back, and just as he turned his back, the ball went past him and hit his hand. Uh, they called the penalty on that penalty kick. Luka <laughs> Modric, Croatia's uh, superstar, uh, older guy, has been able to raise Croatia's soccer level incredibly well over the, his career. But uh older guy that uh, they didn't think was going to play such a presence this year, they decided to give him the opportunity to uh, score on the penalty kick. Uh, he sets it up and kicks it. And uh, it was saved by the goalie on Italy, uh, Donna mm -hmm. Mura. And uh, they were... Uh, everybody was like, oh, no, he blew it. How did he blow it? The ball ended up um, getting kicked back out to the center, and uh, they quickly kicked it back in, got a shot on net, and as the ball came off the goalkeeper, it went to an open side. Uh, Modric was still there, and he ran over and kicked it in and uh, got the goal 32 seconds after he had been stopped on the penalty shot. And wow. uh, the Croatian fans just went absolutely nuts all over the world and in the stadium. It was incredible. And uh, he is the oldest guy to ever score a, a goal in Euro Cup history. 38 years old, 289 days, they said. And uh, it was pretty impressive and cool. And it looked like Croatia was going to advance off that goal. Uh, Italy was like, okay, we better get this going. They started really fresh in the action and Croatia started fading back, started trying to play defense. Um, at one point, 
for some reason, they started trying to stall big time. They started trying to really, really stall. And the referee got really mad. And he added eight minutes of extra time when the 90 minutes hit. Italy scored in the 98th minute to tie it, to advance and knock Croatia out of the tournament. Uh, It was so amazing and unbelievable. The Italian fans blew up across the world. Commercial drive (laughs) is still having people honking their horns and and celebrating. And uh, it is, it was one of the best games I'd ever seen and an incredible uh, comeback from Italy to get the goal in the last minute, the last kick of the game, they scored and were able to um, send themselves on and Croatia out. Well, they must be sending a gift package to that referee that gave them just enough time for them to do that in the game, right? Just, like, literally just enough time. Perfect. It was, it was amazing, yeah. Uh, Z- uh, Zakagni is, uh, I think his name, scored in that 89th minute. Uh, so Italy advances. They play Switzerland in Berlin on Saturday. Uh, there has been only... Um, Three other teams advancing to the round of 16. Spain is in, uh, Germany is in, and Portugal is in. Spain ended up getting in. They won the group that uh, Croatia and Italy are in, Group B. Uh, Spain beat Albania today. They scored in the 13th minute. Ferran Torres got the goal. They ended up being in the top team of that group and advanced into the knockout stage. Um, They don't have an opponent yet, but as I mentioned, so... Um, Italy, Spain, Germany, and Portugal, and Switzerland are the only teams that have advanced so far into the knockout round. Um, they, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it continues on. Um, I have the schedule. Uh, here it is. Oh, yeah, this is the schedule for tomorrow. There's four games tomorrow. Uh, France and Poland at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Netherlands, Australia, same time. Uh, and then the second matches go Denmark, Serbia at noon, same time, England, Slovenia, noon Pacific time. So um, those teams are all trying to advance. Uh, it will be uh, awesome to watch. It has been a phenomenal, phenomenal tournament. And uh, yeah, the start once it hits the knockout stage, then it, it's really, really exciting. But uh, so far, there's been a ton of great games in this Euro Cup. Yeah, and I I wish I had seen that Croatia Italy game because that just sounds absolutely awesome. Like th- those are the games that you absolutely love to see when it comes to watching uh uh soccer. Yeah, totally, exactly. Um, speaking of soccer, also the Whitecaps lost a game this past weekend, uh, two nothing to Portland. Uh, they have fallen from first to ninth now in the standings in the West. Ninth is the last spot in the playoffs but uh they're gonna fall farther down if they keep playing this bad and uh something's got to happen i i hope the coach keeps his job because i really like vanny sartini but um man something has to change with this team they are not fun to watch right now and they cannot get uh, get victories and uh yeah it's uh it's rough um okay every podcast this year i've said uh uh, guess who's won the F1? And almost always you get it right. Uh, and I also ask you, guess who won the golf? And you almost always get it right. So uh, I'm going to yeah. ask you, who won the F1 this weekend? The Spanish Grand Prix. Okay, so it's our Red Bull guy. That, uh, that uh, man. Okay. I, why can't I think of his name? Max. Max Verstappen. Right. Yeah. Yes. He won again. Okay. Yeah. He... So he won again. Now, now let me get. Did his partner in crime also come in second for Red Bull? No, no. Uh, oh. the, the, no, the, uh, they, they ended up, uh, uh, Lando Norris ended up getting second. He had a uh, pole position and he got okay. passed on, in the first lap by two guys and he ended up coming back and uh, finished in second place. Uh, the McLaren, but um, but yeah, still uh, uh, yeah, Max has uh, got the victory, and his closest competitor uh, got second place. But you know, same old, same old, really. You know what? Maybe next time you should just ask me who do you think came in second. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, right. It might be the harder yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it was good. Um we had uh as I said, uh Verstappen first, Lut Norris second, and Lewis Hamilton third. Uh that was Lewis Hamilton's 198th podium. Uh he will be joining the Ferrari team. They announced a, a couple weeks ago he will be joining the Ferrari team next season. So um, we'll see if that uh, changes his fortunes. Mercedes has definitely fallen down to third uh, best team in the in the league, maybe even fourth. So um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, gr- it'll be great to see Lewis Hamilton back uh, with a team that uh, really has a legitimate shot at at winning titles and uh, winning, lo- you know, getting some wins and stuff. But anyway, it was a good race and and it was a lot of fun. Um, it uh yeah ended up going max for Sappen's way and he's well on his way uh okay but golf who won the golf scotty shefflin <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> okay now i i saw a hilarious instagram and it just showed the run that scotty scheffler has been on like yeah. win win second win win jail win, <laughs> win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i i love that how the guy put in jail for the, yeah. for the one tournament <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've got it right in front of me because you sent it yeah. to me too yeah, yeah. he's got yeah. uh the owner palmer tournament win uh players championship yeah. win texas tie for second uh masters win heritage win pga jail uh <laughs> and, then, and then carl schwab tournament tied for second memorial win and then u.s open a lot of people said he lost it because he uh shaved off his beard and it said shouldn't have shaved <laughs> underneath that one and, and then travelers win so yeah yeah you, you only beat uh, scotty scheffler if he shaves his beard or he goes to jail that's the only <laughs> way you're, you're beating the guy <laughs> which is awesome this is yeah. just awesome to see it's like that's the only way you can beat me jail or shave <laughs> my beard i'm not shaving my beard again by the way <laughs> no um uh, incredible uh run he's on uh, he's the first guy to to win six times before July first since Arnold Palmer did it in 1962. So that's uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, there are uh, five golfers that did that in the PGA history. Um, Palmer did it in 1960 and 1962. Sam Snead did it in 1950. Ben Hogan 46. Byron Nelson, 45, and Jimmy Demerit, 1940. All of those guys are Hall of Famers, all considered the greatest golfers to ever live. Uh, so he joins that company. Also, he joins this elite company, too. Um, six wins in a season. Uh, there That has been done three times. Two times by Tiger Woods. In 2005 and 2009, and one time by Nick Price in 94. Uh, Tiger Woods also won, had one season where he won seven times, 2007. One season where he won eight times. Oh, no, two seasons where he won eight times, 96 and 2006. And once when he won nine times in a season in 2000. Also, Vijay Singh won two th- nine times in 2004. So Tiger Woods won nine times once. Eight times twice, seven times once, and six times twice. <laughs> that uh, blew my mind when I saw all that and uh, had to remember. But uh, Scott e. Scheffler with five wins joins that company, and he still has uh, quite a bit of the season left to uh, win some more championships. I guess he's still got quite a ways to go if he wants to match Tiger. Yeah, <laughs> and that's 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 what I took away from that. It's like, oh, you. You still got a lot of golf to play if you want to match that guy. I know. A lot of golf. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it it came down to the 72nd hole. Him and Tom Kim uh were playing with each other, and um it was coming down to the the final few sh- hole uh few, few shots. Uh both of them were on the green, and all of a sudden some people ran out onto the course and uh had flares in their hands and started throwing them onto the green and and jumping around, and police had to come and arrest them and uh, get get them handcuffed and get them off the course. Uh, they left some of the remnants on the hole on the green. Uh, they still putted and finished, 
Um, Tom Kim ended up getting a birdie and Scheffler got a par. So they had to go back to the 18th tee, play the hole again to see who was going to be the, the winner. Uh, Scheffler ended up getting a par. Kim got a bogey and uh, Scheffler ended up getting the victory. But um, these people were protesting climate change and uh they were uh it was very weird you didn't barely get to see them because the camera panned away from them very quite quickly and uh, i saw some footage on some other feeds but um it was weird uh, all the people were wearing a shirt that said um there's there'll be no golf on a dead earth and uh they were uh out there i'm sure they're still in a jail cell as we speak but uh it was kind of a weird uh, scenario that uh, took place uh, just as the tournament was finishing. That's just super weird. I'm sure Scotty Scheffler is like, not weird to me. I just got arrested a couple weeks back. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw him smile and say something to Kim there. I wonder if he's like, oh, I know all those yeah. guys are still getting handcuffed. <laughs> yeah, like... No, yeah, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. You should see what they what they do to you once the cameras are gone. They beat you really good. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, craziness, craziness. Um, in the Champions Tour, Padraig Harrington won the Champions <laughs> Tournament. Uh, it's called the Dicks Open. He won for the third straight year there. Uh, he beat Canadian Mike Weir by one shot, and it's been an amazing week for Padraig. He got in, uh, inducted into the Golf World Hall of Fame. Uh, just last weekend, when they had the um, U.S. Open, uh, they inducted him. So he went gets the Hall of Fame, and then he gets another victory the following week. Uh, pretty impressive week. Oh, that's just fantastic week. That's a week that you kind of dream of because yeah. you're always working towards that goal and get the recognition from your peers. Then on top of that, the cherry, you win a tournament as well. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Live Golf had a tournament in Nashville. Um, the Englishman Tyrrell Hatton won big by six shots, uh, 19 under, beat another fellow Englishman, Sam Horsfield. Uh, four guys tied for third in the tournament, Bryson DeChambeau, John Rom, Joaquin Neiman, and Lee Westwood all shot minus 12, tied for third. Um, Tyrell's team, the Legion 13, won the team title. So he got $4 million for first place there, and he gets to split – uh, three million with his other three teammates. John Rom is one of his teammates. Um, got to do uh, beat DeChambeau's Crusher GC. Uh, they were five shots back and got to split the second place prize. And um, Joaquin Neiman's team, uh, the Torque GC, got third. Uh, their next tournament isn't until July 12th to 14th. That's in Spain. Uh, so they will be there soon. Um, oh, uh, Wimbledon starts this coming week. Um, it was today was the 14th anniversary of the John Isner Nicholas Mahout match. That was the longest tennis match in Wimbledon history. Uh, 11 hours and five minutes spread out over three days. Um, wow. They had their last game was eight hours and 11 minutes and uh, they will never be a game like that in the history of the sport. Cause they changed the rules after that. They will <laughs> never be able to ever get that again. They, uh, they said, no, <laughs> that's it. That's all. And so they will hold that record until the day they die and long after. Well, and rightfully so, because nobody wants to sit through that. I, I get, Game that will never end. It's like, oh, this game is never going to end. This is good. I like this. The final <laughs> final game was 70 to 68. Uh, usually it's 7-6, 7, six, seven <laughs> yeah. you know, six, four, uh, 70 to 68. Uh, big day in the WNBA yesterday. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark faced each other. Massive sold out crowd. And Angel Reese finally got the better of Caitlin in the pros. Got to beat her 88-87. And uh, she had 25 points, 16 rebounds, came from 22 points back, and were able to get the win, eight straight double-double for her. And that's become a really, really great rivalry for the WNBA. Oh, it's great. I, I love the fact that there's some real animosity there that carried over from college, obviously, into the pros, and the fact that uh, 
Hey, they really don't like each other. Cool. Yeah. Love it. Love they it. Do, yeah. I love co- I love competition. Yeah. Um okay, NBA, what are your thoughts on JJ Reddick getting the Lakers job? Okay. Uh my thoughts are this. New coach. I hope he does well. LeBron's probably going to do the co- most of the coaching anyways. So, but can I take the Lakers actually kind of seriously at this point in time? Not really, because it's like, oh, so you're you're doing this again? You're not going to go with somebody like established? <laughs> you're going to go with like a new coach? Okay, cool. See how it works. I, I wish JJ the best. I think he's uh definitely has a high basketball IQ. He knows what he's talking about. So I, I hope he does well. Yeah, it was his uh, 40th birthday today, and he celebrated with a press conference, got to announce it. Um, yeah, four years. I don't think he'll do four years. He'll probably last one, maybe two, and two. he'll be able to collect it, uh, just like Monty Williams did. Uh, he he's had a $65 million deal, did one season, and they canned him, and he gets to collect the rest of it, gets the whole $65 million. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. It's like, if I screw this up, I'll just have to do the one year. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to yeah. go for it. Amazing, hey? That's yeah. It's pretty shocking. Um, NBA draft also this coming week, uh, Thursday. Uh, no, Wednesday, sorry. Wednesday, June 26th and 27th. First round on 26th, second round on 27th. Uh, they're expecting two... Um, very tall guys from France to be the number one and number two. Uh, Zachary Rissacher, uh, he's a six nine forward uh, from France. They expect him to go number one. And Alex Saar, he's the seven foot two center from France, expected to go second overall. Uh, our Canadian Zach Eady, they're expecting him to go in top fifteen. Um, they think that uh, Miami Heat are actually the most interested team for him to back up Bam Adebayo. If that works out, I think Zach Eady will have himself one of the best organizations for him to develop as a basketball player. Yeah. That that would be, I would be so excited if I was him, if that was potentially where I land, because like his development will just go through the roof if he goes with them. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, love the NBA draft. Always fun. Always great to see the suits, the bling. Uh, we'll see if somebody can improve on Grady Dick's amazing suit and outfit there yeah. from last year. But uh, yeah, it'll be fun to see the new crop. It's not a super deep draft compared mm-hmm. to some of the other drafts, especially like last year. But uh, we will see some talented com- talented players coming into the league now. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, again, like you said, it's just it's not super deep. but. Uh... We'll see some interesting picks from teams, that's for sure. Um, another coaching hire today, Kenny Atkinson, hired by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Chris Finch was given a four-year extension by the T-Wolves. They were 56 and 26 this year, had a really good regular season and a uh, pretty decent uh, run this year. Um, there is a lot of things happening also in the NBA, though. Uh, player option decision has to be happened by Saturday. LeBron James uh, could opt in or opt out. We'll see there. Paul George is the other one that everybody's speculating on. Will he opt in or opt out? If he opts in, it's $48.8 million. Opts out, it's uh, $113 million possibility. Um, But uh, lots of uh, people wanting Paul George. Speculation that he might go to Philly, who has... uh, that cap space right now they've got 53 million dollars cap space to uh, maybe bring him in um where do you see him going do you see him stay in la LA or or going somewhere else i don't think there's enough money to go around for everybody to be there like because you got Harden too as well like you have Harden, you have Kawhi, and you have george all of them should be up for like a max contract so i think one of them has to go and i think it's george i think they tried to do the experiment. The experiment hasn't worked. I think George is going to probably be moved to somewhere else. Yeah, you mentioned Harden. Uh, he's a free agent coming up uh, this week. Uh, Clay Thompson also. Uh, do you think Clay stays in Golden State or goes elsewhere? I would love to see Clay stay his entire tenure as a as a warrior, but I, I think I think I think he moves on. 
I think he moves on, and I think everybody knows why he's just not the same player as, as what he once was. Yeah, he had a down year this year, less than 18 points a game, uh, 43% yeah. from uh, the field and only 39% from three. So, uh, yeah, he's diminished for sure. Um, Tyrese Maxey, free agent. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, OG Ananobi, and D'Angelo Russell, all some very big names there. Um, lots of amazing top-end talent are eligible for uh, the massive extensions. Uh, Jason Tatum, I mentioned him last week, eligible for that $315 million extension. Steph Curry, eligible for extension. Joel Embiid, uh, Kevin Durant. Jimmy Butler, Jalen Brunson, Jamal Murray, Donovan Mitchell, Bam Adebayo, De'Aaron Fox, um, Brandon Ingram, and uh, even C uh, Scotty Barnes. So, um, man, like some of the best players in the league, all eligible for these big, big extensions. A lot of people are going to get a lot of money. That's all that means. That's, a, that's what it equates to. Some of these guys are going to get paid huge money. Uh, Jimmy Butler is eligible for a extension if he uh, a fifty nine million for one year, uh, two years one thirteen, uh, coming off a three year one forty six million dollar deal in twenty twenty one. He sent uh, he signed um, Scotty Barnes. Uh, his uh, ad, annual average value of this contract that he's signing fifty four million dollars. And it's crazy, the NBA money now. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, $45 million annual average. Aaron Judge, $40 million. And Scotty Barnes just blows those guys out of the way. And he's and he's not even close to the top 10, top 20 player in the NBA. And he's, you know, way ahead of, of uh, those players in the other leagues, top, top uh, you know, performers in the other uh, sports. Well, Scotty Barnes would just look at them and say, well, I guess you picked the wrong sport, <laughs> dummies. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Yeah, and they're and they're probably eligible for some more as soon as this uh, yeah. new TV deals get signed. Exactly. Uh, you know, we're going to see uh, it, it increase, you know, a lot more. It's going to be just shocking numbers very soon. Well, yeah, but I think, I, I think they project eventually we're going to see contracts that are going to be worth anywhere between 70 to 80 million to even 90 million a year wow. that they'll make in like yeah. five six years or something like that um big meeting today brandon Ayuk met with the 49ers trying to stave off uh getting sent somewhere else he's disgruntled but um yeah they're trying to come together with an agreement we'll see what happens there um did you see the pictures of the chargers new stadium and facility called the bolt man does it look beautiful it's uh making me happy i uh, i'm still a chargers fan that it looks exceptionally awesome it really did yeah i've seen the pictures uh they they, they did a little tour and everything else it looks fantastic i just hope that the team is going to be on the right trajectory as the stadium is on their way up <laughs> I sure, yeah, I sure hope so. Yeah, they need, uh, <laughs> they need to keep uh, moving up and up and up. And um, MLB Blue Jays lost their seventh game in a row today. Uh, it's their longest losing streak in years. Um, looks like they're going to be sellers at the trade deadline coming up at the end of July, and uh, they are falling farther and farther out of a playoff spot uh, in the. Um, in the Eastern Conference, they are or Eastern Division, uh, AL East, uh, 16 and a half games out of first place and falling farther and farther and farther away from a wild card. It is ugly there, and um, uh, we're gonna, yeah, talk about them a lot more now that the NHL and the NBA season is done, but uh, it's gonna be tough. We're gonna have to focus on a bunch more teams. Um, they were dealt a huge blow over the weekend as well. Their shortstop called up from. Triple A was to replace Bo, and uh, he ended up getting caught for PEDs and suspended for 80 games. So um, that's pretty brutal uh, for them. Another blow. He is their top prospect, and uh, he um, was supposed to come in for Bruchet, and uh, boom, got caught for these PEDs. So he's gone for the rest of the year. That 
sucks. That's a huge blow. That's uh, that that's just super unfortunate that that happened. And uh, the Mets closer last night got caught for some foreign substance on his hand and got suspended ten games today. Uh, yeah, trying to uh, cheat the system and he got caught and uh paid the price so um we are running out of time but we have to cover the usc a little bit uh yeah. we had a card in riyadh saudi arabia i think this weekend actually changes the whole face of the ufc and will be a historic weekend that we will remember for a very 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 long time because um the saudi the people from saudi arabia have changed sports and many other uh, other sports have changed with the injection of money. And um, I think this foray into there for the first time will change the world of MMA. And uh, I we'll yet to see how, but I, I think it was a historic day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with you on that because uh, they're dipping their toe in. And when they do that, that means that they're, they're going to do something. There's a plan there, a plan of action. We don't know what it is yet, but I'm very interested to see how it all comes about. I heard that uh, they are trying to create a super league for the NBA. Did you hear this? No. They're going to offer $100 million per season to guys like Luka Doncic, LeBron James, try to get the superstars over there, try to do what they've done with Live Golf. Uh, they are trying to put this together and uh, try to outbid anything the NBA can do, try to give them they, – they, they actually – I heard they were thinking of offering a billion dollars to the top guys. Well, there goes there goes the NBA. <laughs> if it's about you enriching yourself, well, then yeah, they're gonna lose people and they're gonna lose them in droves. Like that's money talks, man, and they have nothing but money, nothing but money. Those guys, so. What did you think uh, of the event? Um, it looks it, that that arena looks amazing. They really, really make it look incredible. Uh, it didn't have. I don't think it was totally sold out for some weird no. reason. Um, no, so I don't know why. Maybe uh, time of day. Like was it? Um, so. like, was it late at night or something? But uh, it, yeah. it, it wasn't totally sold out. And. Um, you know, maybe it was maybe because it wasn't a pay per view, or I don't know. Maybe they're not really that used to the UFC quite yet there, or I don't know. Well, the prelims, the 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 arena felt empty. Yeah. And then even when it was the main card, I was I noticed there was still a lot of empty seats. So I don't know if it was because of like the timing, the time of day or night. I guess it was probably late at night for them. But uh, yeah, it uh, it. It wasn't as busy as I thought it would be. Yeah. It just wasn't. Um, their, their main guy that put puts these together, his name is Turkey Al Sheikh. And um he he took the podium after and said, you know, he's he wants to even have a, a better card next time. He wants to fill it. Uh, I think the capacity is thirty thousand, and he said he wants to have full capacity. And also, um, this was something that was a bone of con con contention from a lot of people. Uh, they did not allow women's fights on this card. And he said they will be allowing women's fights um, next time. So um, that's a good concession. Um, what did you think about them, uh, you know, refusing to have women on the card? I thought that was pretty wrong, even though I'm not a massive fan of women's MMA. I still think it's wrong to have them excluded hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know it's their culture and everything else, but it's still wrong. And I think it would have been a deal breaker if they continued with that. And I think they knew that too. It's like, oh, if you're just not going to have women here on the card ever, this is the last time we do this. Right. And that would have been it. Like you yeah. see with me, like you know how Dana White's personality is. I don't care if you have enough, a lot of money. I just I don't care. Yeah, we don't have women. We're out. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Um, this card was going to be most known for the incredible knockout that, uh, Robert Whitaker was able to get against a, a real up and crummer in Ikram Alaskarov, um, who was a late replacement for Kamzat Chemayev. But a lot of people said, you know, this guy's scary. He's the young lion coming up. He's, uh, yeah. you know, somebody that you got to be very worried about. 
uh, when, when Whitaker landed that overhand right, stunned him, uh, put him up against the cage, and he landed that uppercut. That uppercut. Uh, what an absolutely well-timed, beautiful shot that ended it there. Um, yeah, Whitaker is a guy that you got to have a ton of respect for. Been in there with the, the best of the best of this division and still proves that he is, uh, you know, elite and a guy deserving of another title shot, uh, looking like uh, probably after one more fight. Exactly. Um, too much too soon for Alex Garoff. I don't blame him. I think he was stepping in for somebody else that Whitaker was supposed to fight. Uh, and Chimaev. yeah, Kamzat Chimaev. Uh, Chimaev. So, yeah, uh, I, I felt bad for Alice Garoff because it's like, ah, man, it's, uh, I'm sorry. I don't think you have a chance here. And he did not. He no. did not. Yeah. So pretty quick. Um, I think what they should do is place uh, Whitaker up against Sean Strickland on the Perth card as the co-main event uh, underneath the Adesanya DDP fight. I think, um, you know, they should have them. And then whoever wins that fight gets to fight the winner of the adesanya Trikas duplessis fight. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That that would be a perfect setup. He wants to fight in Australia again. And uh, it's only it's two months away, which is pretty soon. But he didn't take any damage. He damage, should be able yeah. to make that fight. And uh, he got 50K bonus. That was his ninth. Uh, post fight uh, bonus, uh, the second most in the division history behind uh, Anderson Silva's 12. So, um, a very, very decorated, incredible career. And uh, good on Bobby Knuckles. The Reaper has got another really big win in his career. And uh, yeah, I, I think him and Strickland, that would be the, the fight to make. So, let's see if they do it. Uh, the co main event had the two Russian beautiful bears that were fighting each other. Uh, I thought this was going to be just a awesome back and forth battle that was going to lead to a knockout within the first two rounds. Um, but uh, Dr Drago uh, employed an amazing, amazing style and was able to just frustrate the hell out of Sergei Pavlovich, get a very, very, very big victory in this battle of the Russians. Range management was on point for Drago. Like he just kept them at the distance that he wanted to fight the fight. And Sergey just couldn't get into his distance to really be effective within the fight. No. That was the difference in the fight, man. And did you see how mad he was after? He still was oh, yeah. frustrated with him. He came over to say, hey, good fight. And he's like, no, nah, yeah. you, I don't want to talk to you. They were former sparring partners and yeah. uh, knew each other, have known each other for a while. And um, yeah, but no love lost from Pavlovich. He was a mad guy after that one. A little bit of bad blood, a little bit of bad sportsmanship, but I understand. Like he was probably just extremely frustrated with himself and the fact that he couldn't do anything. Yeah, he was neutralized. Uh, uh, Volkov called out John Jones after that. That's his fourth straight win, thirty eighth win of his career, and um, uh, we'll see what John Jones does after he fights Stipe when he gets back healthy, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I was impressive. I was impressed by. Uh, a really, really big win from Drago. Uh, he will, I, I'm sure they'll switch rankings and he'll be third ranked in the heavyweight division. Uh, the the Gastelum Rodriguez fight, not that impressive. Gastelum um, just, you know, really grinded out a victory there. Uh, I was, I'm mad at Gastelum. He missed weight again, uh, continues to miss weight. And, and it's something that, um, you know, has really upset me. Uh, Dana White and many, many other people, I'm sure. Uh, this was, you know, this was supposed to be the most important fight of his career. And he he missed weight by like eight pounds or something stupid. And, uh, you know, he uh, he did not deserve to even be in this fight, uh, but he was able to ground out the win. It was so egregious of a yeah. weight cut miss that, like, if D Roy just said, well, I'm just not going to do it, like, forget it. Like, like, I, I'm hoping that behind the scenes, they compensated him very well to even consider taking that fight because it was so bad. Yeah. It was such, such a bad mate wake up. Well, they, they, they ended up fighting at 185 <laughs> instead of 170. So, yeah, yeah obviously, exactly. he wasn't even trying to get anywhere close to there. So that wasn't 
wasn't fair. And uh, yeah, Rodriguez deserves a lot for uh, continuing on with it. Um, bullet Ner uh, Mega Medoff, uh, Shara Bullet Mega Medoff is a star uh, out there in, in that area of the world. Uh, he probably got the biggest uh, roar from the crowd. Um, he was able to come in and uh, the, the guy he fought uh, hasn't fought very much in the last while. I thought it was a big mismatch. Uh, he was able to do okay in that first round, but he got gassed really badly after yeah. that. In that third round, he had nothing left. He didn't even throw a punch, I think, in the entire yeah. round. Ended up, uh, the bullet uh, took over, got a big knockout win. Uh, but we, we got to see him against even better competition than this one. No, yeah, yeah, he, definitely. Like, he, he was never threatened in this fight. Absolutely controlled the, the stand-up game and uh took him out in the third round like you just took his time and just literally dismantled this man it yeah, was it was impressive yeah, yeah. and it was easy so yeah we need to see him in against better competition yeah he still got a 50k bonus but um yeah it wasn't it wasn't fair the other 50k bonus that went for knockout was given to Vulcan Ozdemir who had a really crazy knockout of Johnny Walker uh he was able to land a huge shot um, get uh, get Walker on skates, uh, ended up dropping him. And then when he fell down to the ground and then he punched him in the chin while he was down on the ground before uh, Jason Herzog could get in there, uh, then Johnny went stiff and he was <laughs> up for a while. Uh, yeah. It was pretty too bad that uh, he was able to get that shot in because Walker was already done. Yeah, Yonker was already done, but uh, you know what? You go until the ref stops you, so he did nothing wrong, and uh, devastating, devastating win for uh, for Ozdemir. Yeah, huge, huge. Uh, really great to see him back. Nice to see no time. Uh, it was cool to see him in there with Daniel Cormier, who he fought for the belt uh, before, and uh, he called out Jamal Hill and Jan Blachowicz, so uh, either one of those fights will be great to see if they can make that happen. Uh, 50K bonus, as I mentioned there. Um, the Nazareth hack for us, Jared Gordon fight, not much to say. Uh, Gordon had zero takedowns out of 13 attempts. Uh, it yeah. was a back and forth war. Uh, if Gordon gets him down, I think he wins this fight, but because uh, hack for us was able to keep it standing, uh, it was pretty even on the feet, but I think uh, the judges gave the nod to him for, for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hack Brass, his takedown defense was incredibly on point. Gordon couldn't do anything with that. And uh, since Hack Brass kept it in his realm, that's how he won the fight. Yeah. Um, okay, we had uh, we only had one submission on the entire card, and that was Felipe Lima. He got 50K for the only submission of the night. Um, really good on him because he came in on short notice. He was only called Wednesday to bring to yeah. come into the fight, and he had to move up in weight, and he yeah. was still able to end up coming in, get the rear naked choke uh, in uh, 115 into the third round. Um, pretty uh, impressive for a guy that had to come in late and fight up a weight class. Yeah, like he was clearly the smaller man in this fight, and uh, he looked good though. His uh, his his stand up, his striking was on point, um, and it to me it looked like he was actually in better shape than Namov. Yeah, like a lot better shape. So I was impressed. Very impressive yeah. point by Lima. Uh, we're running out of time, but uh, the gladiator Fakradinov ended up getting a a judge's scorecard. <laughs> he got uh, it was a split decision victory. In this, he has a 22 fight on beaten streak. That's the longest in the USC currently. Uh, Dolby was great, but um, yeah, ended up losing a split decision. What What were your thoughts? Uh, it was close. It was close, but I thought uh, Fax had uh, the advantage in the stand up, and he he got the better of him in some of the grappling exchanges. But it was a super close fight because Dolby's always game to fight. Um. Okay. Yeah. Do we uh, do you have anything to mention out of the the last three battles? Uh, anything that stands out that uh, you really want to say? Uh, just that uh, Gosvorov looked uh, 
very good in his uh, this, unanimous decision win over Kang. Yep. Uh, he kind of dominated every aspect uh, with the uh, with the striking and his grappling. Yeah, he looked uh, really good there, and um, yeah, Mister Perfect haven't seen in a while, so uh, he he looked rusty a bit to me, and uh, got yeah, wasn't able to bring out the uh, the usual that we see from him. Uh, the one thing that I did want to mention w with the um, uh, God Siriloff, is that how you say his name? Uh, anyway, against Brenson yeah. Ribeiro, uh, there was a massive fence grab there that yeah. um, <laughs> that changed this whole fight. And uh, it's something that they have to uh, be able to stop, uh, pick, take some points away, uh, change the fight, put them on the ground, do something there. Uh, I do, uh, something that uh, they have to change. And I, I, that was something that I, I made a note of. Uh, the Bantamweight fight that kicked off the card was actually the final for the road to the UFC. It's something that they utilize in Asia. Uh, it's kind of like the Dana White Contender Series over there. And um, this was the final. This was These were two really, really great warriors. I, I, I love this fight. And uh, it ended up going to a split decision. And um, uh, Chang, Ho, Chang Ho Lee ended up getting the victory from Korea, uh, um, beating Yao Long. Uh, really, really, really impressive fight. I, I, I enjoyed this a lot. And I think both guys uh, deserve UFC um chances and and opportunities as it goes forward yeah yeah that it was a very competitive fight between the two uh lee just barely beat out long in my in my in my humble estimation of the fight but yeah very good fight we have ufb 303 coming up this weekend uh this is international fight week in vegas we've got the hall of fame inductions uh massive amount of stuff if you are a mixed martial arts fan uh, you should be in Vegas this week. You will not uh, regret going down there. Uh, just grab a flight, go down. Uh, you'll have a blast. You'll get to see hundreds of UFC fighters. There's um, tons and tons and tons and tons of events going on in International Fight Week. Uh, and it will be a really good card as well. Uh, we've got the rematch between Alex Pereira and Yuri Perhachka that ended in their first fight in controversial fashion. I thought Mark Goddard stepped in a little too soon when Perhachka went down. Um, I think he deserved a bit more of an opportunity there. Uh, I think that's one of the main reasons why they're running this back. Yeah, I know. It definitely is the main reason why they're running it back. I'm looking forward to the fight. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion it will not be stopped early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, Pereira is a two-division champion. Uh, he was able to uh, beat Jamal Hill last time in April and uh, was able to defend his uh, light heavyweight belt. Um, Yuri beat uh, Alexander Rakic last time, also in April, USC 300. And um, both of these guys are super tough and endurable, and it should be a hell of a battle. And yes, let's make sure we get no controversy uh, for an early finish. Uh, the co-main event, uh, T-City, Brian Ortega against Diego Lopez. Um, a little bit of a mismatch ranking-wise as T-City's number three. Lopez is number 14. Uh, uh, Ortega's coming off his rematch win over Yair Rodriguez. Uh, arm triangle choke victory in February. Uh, Lopez is coming off a three-fight win streak. Uh, he had a TK win against Sadiq Youssef in USC 300 in April. And um, he's 3-1 and one in the UFC. Only loss against to Movsar Evloev has beat uh, Gavin Tucker, Pat Sabatini, and Sadiq Youssef. Um, but I think it's just a little early, maybe too much of a step up in competition. 14 against 3, I don't like that. You know what? I like the fight. I really do. I, I think Lopez is ready. I think he's ready for this challenge. I think we might see the best of him. I think we're going to see one hell of a fight between these two men. Yeah, I think. Oh, I think it's going to be a heck of a battle for sure. It's going to be a heck uh, of a I, battle. I think. Yeah, I think it'll be a hell of a battle. Both guys. Both guys know how to bang, and uh, should be a great fight. Uh, this Anthony Smith Roman Delice fight actually started out as Jamal Hill Khalil Roundtree, so kind of weird <laughs> to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. th that's how it started. Uh, it was 
uh, <laughs> Roundtree fell off. So then Jamil was supposed to fight uh, Carlos Olberg. Uh, Olberg yeah. fell off. Then it was supposed to be, oh, no, then Hill fell off. Then it was supposed to be uh, Jamal and Anthony Smith against Olberg. Now Olberg is out and Delice is in. Uh, Delice comes in uh, short notice, up a weight class, and lost his last two fights. So um, what do you think? Anthony Smith in a walk? I, I I think Anthony Smith takes this one. And I don't think if Delice loses, if the, the UFC as an organization will really count this loss against them because he's helping them out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what else is there? Oh, I do want to mention the uh, Ian Douchebag Gary against Michael Van <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh Gary is uh, still undefeated at 14 and 0, 7 and 0 in the UFC, but probably the most hated fighter uh, in the game. And uh, we'll see. Um, if MVP comes in, uh, Michael Venom Page had a great performance against Kevin Holland in his first UFC fight, the longtime Bellator fighter. Uh, this is a great matchup and should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. I think I want to see how much uh, MVP uh, gets under uh, Machado's skin by being elusive and being unable to hit him or find him. Like, it's just going to be who's going to be able to get get their game going on the other guy. And I, I, I think MVP might be frustrate Gary into making a lot of mistakes. Um, okay, there's three Canadians on this card. We've got uh, the power bar, Marc-Andre Mark Berrio against Joe Pfeiffer, both of them coming in off of losses. Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer lost to Jack Hermanson in February. Um, Marc-Andre... Uh, took a step back last time and lost to Chris Curtis. Um, but uh, he always brings it, obviously, called the power bar because he's just relentless. Uh, he's had an up-and-down USC career, but um, always like watching him fight and should be an interesting battle against Piper. Yeah, should be a great fight. Um, I don't think it will go to decision. I think somebody's getting knocked out. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Cub Swanson Andre Feely fight. Could be fight of the night. Those guys know how to bang and should be fun. Uh, the other Canadian man on the card is Charles Air Jordan fighting John Silva. Uh, Jordan uh, lost his last time out uh, on split decision to Sean Woodson in January um, in Toronto. But uh, love Jordan, and I think he wins this this fight uh, uh, early uh, early in the prelims. Yeah, no, I, I love Jordan. I love what he brings. I love his flashiness. And I agree with you. I believe he's going to be the ultimate winner in that fight. And we've got uh, Jillian Robertson fighting on the early prelims, fighting against the karate hottie, Michelle Watterson Gomez. We've got the legend, Andre Arlovsky, against Martin Budai. And a couple other fights on the early prelims. Uh, USC 303 taking place in Vegas, International Fight Week. Regular fight times. Uh, early prelims, I think four regular uh, prelims, five and uh, main event, seven o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. I am looking forward to it. It's uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it should be a blast. Uh, that's always an incredible week. Um, Bellator decided to actually put a card on at the same time as the UFC. And um, I was wondering why the UFC put that on early i don't know who announced their card first but i kind of feel like probably bellator did and uh this was out of dublin uh almost nobody watched it uh <laughs> there was people in the stands there but uh the viewership in north america was next to nothing because the usc had their saudi arabia card right up against it um there was a uh, a big roar from the crowd when their hometown boy paul hughes beat Bobby King by second round knockout late in the, in the second round uh, in front of the hometown Dublin crowd. Uh, probably one of the biggest roars I've ever heard in a mixed martial arts event, uh, having their hometown boy get the win. Yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. And it's always good to see the hometown boy do good and get the big win. Yeah, it wasn't a very stacked card, though. Um, they had another, uh, they had a few um, Irish fighters on the card. Uh, Sinead Cavanaugh ended up losing her fight, which um, 
disappointed the crowd big time. The the main event wasn't uh, fantastic. It was a decision. And um, yeah, anyway, nothing too great to mention. Uh, Bellator and PFL, they still haven't kind of figured out what they're going to do moving forward. We'll see how it works. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how they're going to work this out. I'm surprised that be, with PFL purchasing them that they're still having Bellator cards, but uh, we'll see how it all pans out. Yeah, exactly. I, I think they're still trying to get through the logistics and just with the immense of all the fighters on both rosters and just trying to figure it out as they yeah. go along. Okay. Well, uh, we went a little longer than I said it would, Jason. Sorry about that, but I uh, appreciate you coming in after a long, hard day of work. And uh, this was fun as always. And and now um, the, the sports will die down a little bit. We don't, don't have any NHL, no NBA. Uh, the, the summer has officially started. And uh, yeah, we'll probably have a, a lot of shorter podcasts moving forward. Okay. Well, you know what? It's been always fun as always. And Always appreciate it, man. But now I'm going to let you go. Sounds Sign good. it off. Sounds good. Thank you so much again. Okay, man. Cheers. Have a great night. We'll talk soon. Talk soon. Okay. okay. All right. Bye for now. Okay. So uh, that's uh, that's another episode uh, down. Uh, that was fun. We covered the world of sports. Um, it's always uh, so much work to put it together, but uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as we do putting it together. Uh, putting it on and uh, it was fun i'm glad we got to cover uh, everything we did uh, enjoy the euros going forward those are great uh we've got the draft coming up this week for both leagues nba and nhl and um yeah uh bandits go bandits uh keep supporting this team wow uh really really fun and uh yeah they're leading the league still so looking forward to seeing them uh, play a bunch more and um, yeah hopefully get into the Lions game Thursday uh, Snoop Dogg tomorrow and uh, Bandit Saturday we'll see so um, anyway take care of yourself have a great week ahead and we'll see you soon bye for now